days and let's give glory to our maker our deliverer the rose of Sharon the prince of peace our counselor our comforter everlasting father the one who was the one who is the one that is to come let's give glory to Jehovah Shalom Jehovah our peace let's give glory to Jehovah Tisikenu our righteousness Let's give glory to the one who is Jehovah Nissi. He, oh, he's the one that has never lost any war. He's our banner. Let's give glory to the Jehovah El Shaddai, our sufficiency. Give glory to the counselor. Give glory to the Prince of Peace. Let's appreciate our deliverer, our helper, the one who fights our battles when we have need. The one who delivers, the one who saves. Let's appreciate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Alpha is his name. Omega is his name. He has no beginning. He has no ending. Yet he's the beginning. Yet is the ending. When we are all gone out of this world, he will still be God. He created everything, but no one created him. Let's bless his holy name. Let's appreciate him. He's also called the Rock of Ages. He's also called the Ancient of Days. He's also called the Almighty God. Please worship him. He's the God of the universe. Kings bow before him. Presidents bow before him. Only he can enthrone a king. Only he can dethrone a king. He's the one who crowns kings. Is the one who decides what happens in the world. Nothing happens without his approval. He is in charge. He is the God that ruled in the affairs of men. He controls everything. He is the one who is to be worshipped. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the God of the redeemed Christian Church of God. He is the God of Pastor Adeboyim. He is the God of Reverend Akin Dayomi. He is the God who decides what he wants to do. Nobody can question him. He can bring a beggar and make him to sit in the royalty, to sit in the palace. He can bring a slave boy and make him to be a prime minister. He can bring a slave girl and make her to be a queen. Only he can make a driver to be employer of drivers. Only he can make a tenant to be a landlord of many houses. Only he can make somebody who people have written off to become a world star. Only him. If he decides to bless you, nobody can curse you. Let's worship him. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's appreciate him. Oh, give glory to the Almighty. Blessed be your holy name, O oh God. Thank you, faithful Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. 
And so, Father, we thank you. We give you glory for your love and your mercy. We thank you for your excellency. You are the original excellency. Nobody put you in power. And nobody can remove you in power. Instead, you are the one who puts kings in power. And removes kings when you want to. Father, we bless your holy name. This very morning, we want to say we are grateful. Blessed be your holy name in Jesus' name. Father, visit us in a new dimension. Give us favor we don't deserve. Father, we thank you. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Now shake hands with your neighbor and say, God will favor you today. It shall be so in Jesus' name. Also tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, even though I say God will favor you, my own favor will be bigger than your own. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says we should covet endlessly. The, eh? Praise the Lord. The best things of God. If you covet one, something big is not a sin. I had the testimony of a sister today made me happy. She said, "My God, no, I told God my budget is very big. Hello, somebody. And so God should do something to take care of the budget. I know many of those of you who have big, I like people who think big, who have big budgets. Not those who are providing for motorcycle. Provide for a luxurious bus. Provide for a private jet. Think large. Then God will fill it because our God is El Shaddai. Praise the Lord. As many as are thinking big, as have big budgets, God will meet your budget in Jesus' name. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. This morning, by the grace of God, we will be sharing a message titled, The Favor of God. Praise the Lord. What did I call it? The Favor of God. Brethren, the favor of God is an answer to so many questions. When God favors a man or a woman, his life or her life gets easier. The favor of God makes up for what your physical effort cannot be able to achieve. The favor of God adds supernatural blessings to your physical work. The favor of work leads you to where no human being can put you. Brethren, you need the favor of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Favor makes a difference in the life of a man or a woman. You need the favor of God. That favor will come your way in Jesus' name. What is favor? Favor is what we don't deserve that God gives to us. Praise the Lord, somebody. What did I call it? Favor is what you don't deserve that God does what? Gives to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you know that Jesus needed the favor of God in order to operate while he was physically here? If Jesus needed the favor of God, you need the favor of God. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. The Bible says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God. And with who again? A man. He, had, he was in, increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with who? With God and man. If Jesus needed favor of God, you will need the favor of God. Brethren, Favor of God opens doors. Favor changes stories that are not good. 
Favor makes you to qualify when you are not qualified. Favor is indispensable for you to excel. You need hard work to succeed. But you need favor to be on top. I will repeat what I said. Because it's very important. You need hard work, diligence, in order to succeed. But you need favor to excel. There are levels of success. Hard work has a limit to how far it can carry you. But when the favor of God is added to your hard work, suddenly you will be on top. And this month, we are, our team is moving from the valley to the mountaintop. You are not going to get to the top without favor. Hard work is very important. You know I don't like lazy people. And God doesn't like lazy people. God wants people to be hardworking. Jesus himself said, I walk because my father walked. He said, walk during the day when there's light. The time cometh when no man can walk. You need to walk. And the Bible says, see a man that is diligent is walk. You will sit before kings. You will not find him among me men. So you need to walk. A lazy man is sure to be hungry. But as much as diligence and hard work are important, without the favor of God, a diligent man will not get to the top. A diligent man will have limited success. But the favor of God, when added to the diligence or hard work, will make him to shine. I am praying for somebody. The favor that we add to your diligence, God gives it to you now in Jesus' name. I prophesy favor upon your life. Receive that favor from the Almighty God in the name of Jesus. Brethren, because you need favor, let me just quickly share with you a few things that can happen. There are many. Practically everything you, you do in life, you need favor to be added to it in order to succeed. Praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. You, I'm sure you, you need favor to be promoted. Somebody shout hallelujah. What did I say about favor? You need favor to be promoted. As a story in the Bible of a young man who was 17 years old. His name is Joseph. He was 17 years old when he was sold into slavery. And at that 17 years of age, he passed through a lot of trials. You know the story. You heard it over and over again. Uh, eventually, he was sold into slavery. Eventually, he arrived in a foreign country in Egypt. Eventually, the madam of the house, Potiphar's wife, accused him of rape that he did not commit. Everything about him was one trouble after the other. He ended up in prison. Praise the Lord. But the story of Joseph is an amazing story. Because even though he had problems, favor was following him. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you look at Genesis 39 verse 6, it says, that the, the boss of the house, the master, he left all he had in the hands of Joseph. Why did he hand over his household to him? The answer is in the same verse. He said he even did not know what happened in his house, even, the, even except for the food he was eating. 
He said he knew not what he had, save the bread which he did eat. Why? Because Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Joseph had favor. That was why he was made the overseer, so to speak, in the house of Potiphar. This is talking about Potiphar. Everything was handed over to him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everything was given to him. He was overseer in the house of Potiphar, his master. In other words, other house boys were reporting to him. The, king, the owner of the house didn't know what was going on. He just said, take charge of everything. Why? Because he had favor. That same boy found himself in prison when he was wrongly accused of rape. Even in prison, he had favor. Genesis chapter 39, verse 21. Genesis 39, verse 21. In Genesis 39, 21, the Bible says, And the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Now see the result of that favor. Just like in Potiphar's house, where he had favor and was made the head overseer of the house, in the prison, they made him overseer again. Because if you read the next verse, see, because he had favor, look at what happened. The chief warder did in the next verse. And the keeper of the prison, that's the chief warder, committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. In other words, he was held responsible. He was, he was given the duty to look after and account for the activities of all the prisoners. This man was a houseboy. They made him head of houseboys. And the owner of the house said, take charge. This man found himself in a difficult situation inside prison. He was not a warder. They say, you are the head of all the prisoners here. In other words, when they bring food, it is Joseph that will determine if he wants to collect momo or he wants to eat roundabout or, you know, collect chicken. He just decides, he will put aside his own food before he decides what to give to other prisoners. It's Joseph that will be able to make reports to the chief warder to say, this prisoner is not well, this one has a problem. It was the, he said, whatever they did, he was the doer of it. In other words, he was accountable to the chief warder for all the prisoners. So, he was an overseer in Potiphar's house. He was an overseer in prison. Even when he came out of prison, you know, Genesis 41, verse 41, again he was made an overseer for the whole of Egypt. Genesis 41, verse 41. You know, see, the Bible said, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of what? Egypt. How many lands? Land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. From becoming an overseer in, uh, as a normal order, as a houseboy, he became an overseer in prison. And then became an overseer to, for the whole land of what? Egypt. Why? Why is it so? Why is it that anywhere this man comes, here we make him the boss. I hope you know he was not the first son of Jacob, his father. He was not even second. He was second to last. Yet, he was the one that Jacob loved most, his father, and bought him a coat of many colors. Anywhere he goes, he will be the boss. Anywhere he goes, until he became the prime minister of a country where he was the slave. This man was a slave. This man did not have citizenship of Egypt. 
This man in today's language does not have a green card. He was sold. He was an illegal resident. He was a slave. He's not supposed to be even seen. But this guy became the one who was determining those who will enter Egypt. Because the king said, take over everything. Anywhere he goes, they will say, take over everything. One man, be in charge. Anywhere he goes, be in charge. Because he had the favor of God. When you carry favor, anything you do will succeed. Why? Because God will compel people to help you to succeed. God will, anywhere you go, men are waiting. Before you make a request, they will assist you. Brethren, many years ago, I was working in one bank. And when they transferred me to a particular region of the country, in that region, they have never made money for many years. The bank was not making profit. And I was sent to that region. Suddenly, that region became the best region. And for 17 years, nobody wanted to go there because they were making losses. Why? Because the man God favored was there. Because one thing you need to do is that when you stay around a man God has favored, the favor will rub off on you. That's how it works. That's why Brother uh, Laban said that since Jacob came to, his, came to his house, he can see that things are no longer what he used to be. That's why Potiphar said, since this boy came to my house, things have changed. Let me hand over the house to him. Because see, everything works well when a man that is favored is around. I spent two years in that region. And for those two years, every month, we were winning an award as the best region, the best region, the best region. And people thought that, ah, that the moment they send anybody, it will continue. So they transferred me to another region. The region I went to became first again. And the man who took over my own region started struggling. I spent one year in the region. They sent me yet to another place. And things began to change again. Why? Because if you stay around a man that has favor, favor will rub off on you. It is not possible for a man who carries favor to be your boss and you will be suffering. Could possible. But if you have a man that is cursed, the curse can rub off on you. We have, that's why the Bible says... When the righteous are in power, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, the people mourn. It's the word of God. You cannot have a man who is the head of a home who is favored and the home is suffering. You cannot have a football coach who is favored and they are losing games. Favor opens doors. Favor is wonderful. Brethren, you need favor. I will give you another story about favor. Many years ago, almost 15, 20 years ago now, I joined one bank. And I joined at the same level with another man. That man was a deputy general manager. I was also a deputy general manager. This was 2002 or three. About 18, 16, 17 years ago. And if you know the structure in banks, after deputy general manager, the next level is general manager. But on the day of confirmation of appointment, one year after, the man who resumed with me as deputy general manager was actually confirmed and 
he was promoted to general manager. But I was promoted to executive director. They gave me double promotion. I have never been a general manager in my life. God made me to jump one grade from deputy general manager at the age of 39 to, to executive director. Why? Why would a man who resumed with me get one, one promotion to the next level and me, I get double? I prophesy to you because that is favor at work. I prophesy to you, God will favor you. Yeah. You will get a promotion you don't deserve. Yeah. Oh, oh you, don't, you didn't hear me very well. Favor makes you to get a promotion you don't deserve. Joseph was a foreigner and they made him a king in a country in which he's not a citizen. I prophesy to you, the promotion you don't deserve, God gives it to you in the name of Jesus. The promotion you are not qualified for, God gives it to you now in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Number two, promotion makes you the best among your equals. That's an Italian, a Latin word called ceteris paribus. You know, you know when you are when there's a choice to be made, and everybody is equal, they need to pick one person. You will be chosen among your equals in Jesus' name. When there are hundred people and there's one vacancy. And all the hundred all have master's degree. Everybody is qualified. That's one of one office. That's where favor comes. Favor will now single one person out and say, All of you are qualified, but this person. The Bible says there were so many virgins in Israel. When Mary was chosen to be the mother of Jesus Christ. Go and read your Bible very well. There were many virgins in Israel. But God chose only one virgin. Go and read your Bible well. There were many virgins. But favor located Mary. That's why when the angel arrived where Mary was, Bible says he saluted her. He said, thou art highly favored among women. Do you understand? Only thou art highly what? Favored. Not just favored, but highly favored. Among who? Among women. In other words, there are many virgins around. But you, you are carrying uncommon favor. I prophesy to you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will give you uncommon favor in the name of Jesus. From that crowd, God will separate you in the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, that's certainly his parables. First among equals. God will choose you uh, as the first among equals in the name of Jesus. There were so many virgins in Israel. But God chose only one woman. And that's why the angel announced. You are, not, you are not the only virgin, but thou art highly favored among women. Brethren, that's a story in the Bible. Esther chapter 2, verse 15. Esther 2, verse 15. The Bible says that if the, the king was looking for a queen, King Ahasuerus, because he was looking for a queen, they ask ladies to apply. And so many ladies applied. Hello, somebody. How many ladies applied? So many applied. One of the people that applied was who? Was who? Esther. There was heavy competition. And because there was competition, competition everybody tried to be at his best. Somebody shout hallelujah. But there was only one person to be chosen. Somebody shout hallelujah. How many people will be chosen? Only one person. Why? Because there's need for only one queen. 
the only person that needs to be chosen, if they are all qualified ladies, something has to distinguish that person from others. Somebody shout hallelujah. Anywhere. I want you to read that Esther chapter 2. Go to verse 9. He says, and the medium, that's talking about Esther, pleased him and she obtained kindness and he speedily gave her her things for purification with such things as belonged to her and seven medals which were made to begin to her out of the king's house. And she preferred her and her maidens unto the best place, best place of the house of the women. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everyone, even the women who were to assist uh, Sister uh, Esther, favored her. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at verse 15. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her to his daughter, was come to go into the king. She required nothing but what her guy, the king Chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked unto her. Somebody shout hallelujah. She obtained what? Favor. Anywhere she went, favor was with her. Anywhere she went, people wanted to assist her. The king's chamberlains were ready to help her. The king loved her more than others. By the time the king set her eyes on her, the king said, no need to bring another person. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because the woman had the favor of God. People don't prepare you for nothing. They said the chamberlains, the maidens who were to, choose, to assist her, they prepared her. They gave her more than what she required. Brethren, the thing that separated Esther from other contestants, so to speak, for the office of the queen of Babylon, the land, she, that land was favor. Favor separated her from the crowd, and she was chosen. The Bible said when the king saw her, everything changed. Look at verse but we read verse 17, right? Let's read verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women. The king loved Esther above all the women. Why? And she obtained grace and favor in his sight. More than all the virgins. Favor will separate you from those who are competing with you. Don't forget everyone was a virgin. Look at it again. She obtained favor in his sight, more than all the virgins. In other words, the favor Esther had was others have their own favor, but her own was higher than all of them. Okay? So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Brothers and sisters, when there is competition and one person needs to be chosen, Favor is what separates people from the crowd. Sometimes when a young man wants to marry and is looking at one woman, that one woman may not know that the young man's eyes are into seven other women. Inside his mind, he's asking, which one, which one, which one? Which one will qualify? And it happens also the other way around. Many times when God wants to give a woman a husband, many men are also competing. So the one man who eventually is accepted by the lady is the one that has favor. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 28, verse 22, and it says, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. And obtained the favor of the Lord. Marriage is a favor. Somebody shout hallelujah. But then you need favor. When there's competition, favor will separate you from the crowd. 
When one person needs to be chosen, favor will separate you. Many years ago, I applied for a scholarship of the United States government, and I was in Port Harcourt. Many people I applied, applied. The day my application landed, two days after, I got a call from America. That was 19 years ago, offering me that scholarship. And I ended up spending six weeks in America, paid by the United States government, what they call best and brightest African bankers program. And they gave me food free of charge for six weeks. Accommodated me in first class hotels, carried me in fine cars, even did my laundry for me, and still gave me $2,000 to be out of pocket expense. And they paid my ticket from Port Harcourt to, to, to America and took me back to Port Harcourt. Brethren, I know what is called favor. I don't just preach theory. I preach what I have already experienced to let you know that the word of God is live and active. Because you might say Queen Esther was many years ago. God is still raising Queen Esther today. What happened to Joseph maybe thousands of years ago? God is still raising Joseph today. God is the same God. Hebrews 10, 38. Yesterday, today, and forever. He changed not. God is still doing miracles. Anywhere there's competition, and there's a choice to be made, and that choice is limited, what will separate you from the crowd is favor. And I want to prophesy to you, God will separate you from the crowd in Jesus' name. I say, God will separate you from the crowd in Jesus' name. Brethren, do you know that favor causes men to help you? You can only be separated from the crowd if men and women help you. But they will be helping you without knowing what they are doing. It's just God commanding them. This brother, even though the application have closed, has closed, please take his own in. This one, we have finished, but take it. They don't know what they are doing. But God is the one controlling and direct because God rules in the affairs of men. Whatever he wants to do, he will bring it to pass. Why were the Chamberlains assisting Sister Esther? They didn't know her. In fact, Esther was a slave girl. Esther was, today's language, a prisoner of war. The Babylonians had conquered their country, Israel, and took them as slaves. The uncle was a gate man, Mordecai. His father and his mother were already dead. So her curriculum vitae, her CV, was a horrible CV. Useless CV. CV of somebody who is a prisoner of war. Look at her CV. Prisoner of war. Slave girl. An orphan. Father or mo and mother had died. What about your uncle? He said, my uncle is a gate man. Look at her CV. Everything was against her. To make matters worse, she was not a citizen of that country. And the king required a queen. And they didn't know that she was a foreigner. And they accepted a foreigner to be the wife of the king. And the uncle warned her, never let them know that you are from a foreign country. Brethren, do you understand what's going on here? I believe I'm describing somebody's CV. Somebody who has a useless CV. That they are saying, you, with this paper, you cannot go anywhere. I am prophesying to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes, they said you will not go anywhere. But I see God taking you to a level nobody can imagine the name of Jesus. If I were you, I would stand up and receive this prophecy. In the mighty name of Jesus, every one of you whose CVs already has a dent, that your CVs don't look good. Your resume has a problem. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
God gives you a new CV in the name of Jesus. Despite the limitations on your CV, God promotes you to a level where you will be envied in the name of Jesus. The God that lifted Esther begins to lift you now in the name of Jesus. Receive your promotion now in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. God bless you. Brethren, God causes men to help a person who is favored. Like I was telling you. That's why how the person can become first among equals. This story may not make any meaning to you, but it makes meaning to me. Two years ago, I visited America. I was going somewhere to see my friend. And he was waiting for me in his office. But I didn't know how to get there. On the way, I dropped off because I ended to buy something in a pharmacy shop. And I went in, bought what I wanted to buy, and bought some other things. Trust me, when I go to a shop, I go beyond what I went to look for. God will help me in Jesus' name. So, after I finished buying what I wanted to buy, I now asked the manager of the shop, one of the big pharmacy stores in the U.S. And I said, I'm going to so so and so place. Thank God for Uber now. Because I didn't use Uber. I asked, please, I need a cab. Can you help me call a cab that can be able to take me to where I'm going? The man asked for the address I gave him. He said, wait. I want to do a few things. Gave me about five minutes or so or seven minutes. He attended to so many people, the cashiers who are working, manager of the pharmacy. When he finished, I was now waiting for him to say, here I have called the taxi. The man said, where did you say you are going? I said, so, so, and so place. He said, come. I have temporarily closed. So he timed himself off. Say I should follow him. I followed him. He started his personal car. And he carried me for over 45 minutes. Got there and asked me, is this the place? I said, yes. I was watching the man. He dropped me. He reversed and went back. Now, if you don't call that one favor, I don't know what you will call favor. For a man, a white man, who doesn't know me, who I was asking for a taxi, and he put me in his personal air-conditioned car, and carried me for 45 minutes, and dropped me and went back. There must be a power talking to him, telling him, this man standing by your side is not an ordinary man. This is a child of Jesus. Leave whatever you are doing. Don't call a taxi for him. It's my special son. Carry him in your car. Go and drop him and come back. That is a power talking to him. I pray for you. Everywhere you need help, God will give you more than what you are looking for. Wherever you need help, more than what you are asking for, God gives you from today in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. I will tell you another story. You know, I tell plenty of stories, but they are illustrative. And they are not what happened to others. Because what happened to me is authentic. I'm the one who, not that I had. 1999 to year 2000. I went to preach in Port Harcourt. I was invited as a guest minister in a church. When I finished, I needed to be in Lagos on Monday morning in my office. And that time, planes were not too many. The last flight on a Sunday was Chan Changi. And they needed to, do, that flight leaves about 1.30 p.m. on Sunday. And that's the last for the day. So I finished preaching about 11 or 12 and began to fly, literally fly to the airport. By the time I got to the airport, it was about 2.30. So I went to the counter, told them, I want to go to Lagos. They laughed at me. They said, look, Oga, the last flight is 1.30. This is after two. 
You see, they're going to Lagos. We have clothes counter. We have finished selling. He said, the, the woman said, but there's something unusual I don't understand. We have finished onboarding passengers. The pilot has closed the door. In civil aviation rule, the moment the door is closed, it is not opened again, except there's an emergency. And they said to me, something unusual is happening. We don't know if there's a problem. But the pilot is still in the tarmac. The plane has not left for almost 30 minutes. And he didn't speak to us. So he said, say in any case, the plane ha door had been shut. But I said, okay, give me a ticket. Let me go and try my luck. They wrote a ticket for me. I carried my bag. I went to the tarmac, Port Harcourt Airport. When I got towards the plane, the pilot saw me. He opened the door of the plane. I entered. I sat down. The pilot made an announcement. Real life story. Say, now we can leave. And the plane left. I didn't understand what was going on. But I had passengers grumbling. Who is this VIP we have been waiting for? Who is this man? Is that the governor? Why, why, why? And the pilot never even told us where we have been waiting here. They were all grumbling and grumbling. But Brother Simon was on, in the air on the way to Lagos. I want to prophesy to you, if you can stand up, whatever God needs to do in order to favor you, God does it in the name of Jesus. Oh, if God needs to make a pilot to wait for you to be blessed, that pilot will wait in Jesus' name. Anything God needs to do for your favor to come, for your miracles to come, God begins to do them even before the end of this year in Jesus' name. Before this 2019, we end. Somebody receives favor. Before this year we end, this 2019, somebody will get an uncommon favor. If you are that person, say, I receive it. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. God bless you, you may be seated. Brethren, when a man is favored, God breaks protocol. Rules are changed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Rules are changed because of a man. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. You know, I'm not sure if you remember the story of Esther. That story, the story still amazes me. Do you know that the Bible says that the king Ahasuerus was so powerful that if you come to see him, but he did not invite you, the punishment can be what? Death. But the Bible says protocol was broken. Queen Esther was not invited by the king. In Esther chapter 5 verse 2. Esther chapter 5 verse 2. The Bible says that, and it was so. When the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor immediately in the sight of the king. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter. That was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then the king said unto her, What will thou, Queen Esther? What is thy request? It shall be even given to thee to the half of thy kingdom. The woman who was afraid, who said, If I perish, I perish. Because she knew the consequences could be death. Because she was carrying favor, as we read in Esther 5, verse 2. 
when she arrived, the king raised the man to the, the, the staff of office towards her and she touched it. And the king said, my queen, what do you want me to do for you? Even if you are one half of this kingdom, I will give it to you. What do you think is at work? A favor of God. God was talking to the king and said, this very queen is not like the one you depose. This one is from the tribe of Israel. This one is carrying favor. This one, I want to use her to deliver my people from their bondage when Haman will arise. God already knew tomorrow. That's why God told me that before Haman arose, he already had planted Esther in the palace because he knows Esther will be used to deliver the Israelites from the hand of Haman and the king when Haman will now lay charges against the Jews. Because before your problem starts, God has already made a provision for a solution. That's why the king of kings was talking to a local king. At that point in time, King Ahasuerus was the local king. The king of kings was talking to, her, to him and said, mind your business. You better behave. I know you normally keep people when, they, when you don't invite the boy. This one, you better receive her well. She's my candidate. I want to use her. She's from the tribe of Israel. Receive her with joy. And even on far her half of your kingdom. That is favor at work. When God turns what would have been debt into an offer of half of the kingdom. Somebody will carry favor. Somebody will carry favor. Protocol will be broken because of you in the name of Jesus. Brethren, many years ago, 1980 to be specific, Talking about protocol being broken, I was registering as a freshman in the university. That's now 39 years. And as I was registering, we had a long queue. It was all morning, all afternoon. The people registering were very slow. And we had a long queue of young boys and girls under the sun registering. There were no computers in those days. Everything was manual. Now you can register in your house. You can register on your mobile phone. Attach all your, upload all your documents and they'll tell you, you know, submit. You have submit. In those days, you have to physically show up. They see your face and we stayed under the sun. When we got around three o'clock or four, I was still halfway on the queue. And the woman announced to us that she's about to close for the day. We were worried. I had traveled several kilometers to the university. Didn't know anybody in that town. They didn't register me that day. God knew I would be in trouble. But suddenly, the woman who said, I'm closing, said, I'm about to close. But that, that, that guy... That guy at the back, that guy at the middle, everybody was running forward. Is it me? Say, no, no, I mean, that, that boy, that boy, that guy at the back. He was pointing at me. Finally, from nowhere, they left about 10 people in front. Went to me at the middle. He said, I should come. I came. He said, give me your papers. I gave, him, gave her my papers. She registered me and gave me accommodation and closed her window for the day. What do you call that one? I, I have been enjoying favor all my life. I know what favor means. Brethren, protocols, laws have been changed because of me. I was once working in a bank, in a particular bank. That bank had an embargo on mortgage loans. They will not give mortgage loans to staff for some reasons. And they put the embargo for almost a year. But one day, God showed me a vision of a house and told me that's the house I want to give you. And I discussed about that house with the owners. 
And I went to my office and applied for a mortgage loan, knowing fully well that's an embargo on loans. But I went to my toilet and prayed over the documents, submitted it to the MD. That very evening, the MD wrote a memo that all embargoes on mortgage loans for staff have been lifted. And I never saw the MD. I only prayed in the toilet over my documents. I applied. He approved my mortgage loan. I bought my house. That's the house where I'm still living in the last 20, 19 years. I called a friend of mine who is a pastor also. I said, embargo has been lifted. And in the estate where I bought a house, I can see other houses. Can you come? That one quickly came. Got one, applied, they gave his own. He bought his own house. Today, me and he are neighbors for the last 19 years. Now, about two weeks or three weeks after, a new memo came out. All embargoes on staff loan have been placed back. You don't understand what is called favor. I want you to stand up because you are working with a pastor who has received favor. I pray that part of the favor God has given me, oh God, release to these ones in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, the way you have favored me, everyone here, man or woman, boy and girl, let them begin to enjoy that favor in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord, you have continually embarrassed me with favor. Please, Lord, embarrass these ones with favor in Jesus' name. The way you have helped me, help these ones. The way you have favored me, favor these ones. The way you have given me amazing testimonies, give these ones amazing testimonies. Let their miracles be bigger than my own in the name of Jesus. Let their favor be bigger than my own in the name of Jesus. Father, take a part of my favor that you have given me and deposit upon everyone here in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have declared. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Finally, when you are carrying favor, you are delivered from your enemies. Proverbs, Psalm 41, verse 11. Psalm 41, verse 11. David said in Psalm 41, verse 11, he said, oh Lord, the way I will know you have favored me is that you will not allow my enemies to triumph over me. Hello, somebody. When God favors you, God will not allow your enemies to defeat you. That's what David said. He said but, but this I know that that how we know that you favor me because you won't allow my enemies to defeat me. When we talk about enemies, some of you think only about human beings. Do you know poverty is an enemy? Do you know sickness is an enemy? Do you know typhoid fever is an, is an enemy? Cancer is an enemy. Every disease Barrenness is an enemy. The we, it, it don't always think about human beings. Stagnancy is an enemy. Failure is an enemy. I am praying for you. All the, none of your enemies will overcome you. Because of the favor of God, your enemies will bow before you. Every enemy you have will bow before you. I say your enemies will bow before you. None of your enemies will defeat you. If you believe that, shout a big hallelujah. Just before we close, I just want to let you know that a, God does not favor everybody. Favor is for only one group of people. Psalm 5, verse 12. Psalm 5, verse 12. It is only when you are holy that you enjoy favor. He said, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. How will God bless the righteous? He said, with favor, will thou compass him as with a shield. Favor is not for those who commit adultery. Favor is not for those who commit fornication. The favor of God does not go to those who are stealing in their offices. 
The favor of God does not go to those who have bitterness, envy, unforgiveness against their parents, against their husbands, against their wives. People who have refused to forgive others. The favor of God does not go to those who are envious of others, who want others to come down. The reason is that favor means that God will be with you. And God is only with the righteous. That's why if you read Genesis 39 verse 21, Genesis 39 verse 21, it says that because God was with Joseph, he showed him favor. If God is with, with you, you will have favor. Genesis 39, 21. Praise the Lord. He said, but the Lord was with Joseph. Can you see it? But the Lord was what? With Joseph. And showed him mercy. And gave him what? Favor. If you are a friend of God, he will be with you. And when he's with you, he will show you favor and mercy. And God cannot be with somebody who is fighting against him. So I want to appeal to you. If you really want God to show you favor. 